the ceremonial and sacrificial law made a way for Israel to approach a holy God. Scripture is full of ways to make yourself clean. From things like don't eat self, shellfish, don't eat pork, the ways you bathe, the types of fabric, fabric you wear. They were a setting apart of you in the ceremonial law that showed that you had been made clean before God. The sacrificial law was God's way of covering your sin through the sacrifice of an innocent lamb. The sacrificial and ceremonial law were there to make a way for unclean things to be seen as clean and for our sins to be dealt with. But Jesus is the fulfillment of the sacrificial and ceremonial law. We're going to do a lot of things in church today. But you know what we're, going to, what we're not going to do? At no point in this service today are we going to pull up a lamb, lay it on the altar, and allow its spilled blood to drip down onto the floor. In no way are we going to bring forth the perfect spotless lamb that was preserved for just this moment when the sins of the people would need to be covered. And at just the right moment in the calendar, we would lay down that lamb on a holy seat of mercy. And we would strike that innocent lamb so that its blood, the innocent blood of that lamb, would cover the seat year after year. Now we're going to sing and we're going to proclaim that the lamb was slain, but the lamb was Jesus once and for all. We're going to lift our voice and we're going to celebrate and we're going to pray to the slayed Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And we don't care if you had shrimp to eat last night. We don't care if you had bacon with your breakfast this morning. We don't even care if you wore polyester to church today. Because the ceremonial law that made unclean things clean before a holy God are no longer necessary. It's no longer necessary to keep the feast or observe the new moon or to not eat bacon. Jesus makes us clean, not temporarily, but forever. Jesus fulfilled the ceremonial law. Jesus is the perfect Lamb of God. And Jesus made you clean forever. Finally, number one was Jesus works through holy attraction. Two, Jesus is the unleavened bread. And three, Jesus became the leper. Here, verse 44 and 45 of Mark 1. But he went out and began to talk freely about it and to spread the good news so that Jesus could no longer openly enter a town but was out in the desolate places, and people were coming to him from every quarter. The man's disobedience. Now, remember his disobedience is he told somebody about his restoration. They'd eventually figured it out. But Jesus said, go immediately to the priest. But he immediately goes and tells his friends and his family. Goes and tells the people from his childhood he hadn't seen for years because he'd been outside the city and says, look what's happened to me. And they told people, and they told people, and they told people, and the story got spread so fast and so far that... Jesus was no longer even able to go to the city, which was his desire. Mark 1.38 says, Let us go to the next towns that I may preach there also. For that is why I came out. Jesus came to preach to the cities and the towns. Josephus records that there were 240 of them. And this man's testimony made it so that Jesus could no longer publicly enter a city until he'd enter into Jerusalem for his own death. And he stayed out in unpopulated areas. Mark 3 says, Jesus withdrew with his disciples to the sea, and a great crowd followed from Galilee to Judea to Jerusalem. Jesus withdrew. You know what happened? Jesus took the place of the leper in the wilderness. The leper came admitting that he was unclean, and Jesus cleanses him, and then goes into the wilderness where the leper was. Jesus, who was Utterly untainted, unleavened, became our sin. We come saying we are unclean, and Jesus comes saying, come here. Jesus heals the unclean leper. The leper goes back into the city, and Jesus takes his place outside the city. 
It's the perfect picture of the Gospel. When we come to Jesus saying, Jesus, I've made my marriage unclean. I've made my wayward children flee. I've made my finances a mess. I've made my vocation a mess. Lord, 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 look at all of the things that You've given me and all of the ways that my poor choices, my rejection of Your best has made them unclean. Lord, make them clean. And Jesus says, give them to me. But nothing ever just becomes clean. Someone had to pay the price to make the unclean thing clean. So Jesus says, bring me all of your uncleanliness. Bring me all of your baggage. Bring me all of your mess. Bring me your marriage. Bring me your body that's broken and filled up with things that the doctor says there's no hope for. Bring me your children which are wayward. Bring me your lack of hope over your vocation and destiny. Bring me your lack of hope that your story can be redeemed. Bring it all to me. Bring me your uncleanliness. And then Jesus Because He knows that unclean things don't just become clean. He stretches out His arms on a cross and says, put it on Me. And in His moment of God forsakenness, He says, Father, take out Your wrath on Me. Take out the justice due the unclean children of Israel on Me. Take out the wrath that was due the Gentiles, all the people of the nations. Take it out on Me. And in doing so, all of the ways that we didn't measure up are laid on the back of the only begotten Son of God. And in that moment, in that place, Jesus dies for your sins so that when you say, make me clean, He says, here, have mine and I'll take yours. The story of the Gospel is that you could never make yourself clean. So Jesus did it for you died in your place for your sins and set you free. And that's the gospel.